guy. Today we're going to talk about the WD-45 Ellis Chalmers is what we're going to be rebuilding today. It just also pertains to the WSC, the WF, and the WD. But the one we're working on today is the WD-45, but everything we do today will pertain to your tractor. Get started, we're going to be uh, draining the fluids from the engine, the water out of the radiator, the oil out of the engine, and then taking the hoods off. We're starting to drain the fluids on the tractor. We got the radiator drained into a pail, and we pulled the plug on the oil pan. And this particular tractor might be what you're going to see. The oil is white. It's got antifreeze in the crankcase oil. So we start tearing this tractor down, we're going to be looking for possibly a you know, blown head gasket, uh, a sleeve that's leaking in the engine block, um, anything else we can find, hopefully not a cracked block. But that's what we're going to be looking for when we take this tractor apart is why that oil has got so much antifreeze on it. Urban guy have got the hood all loose on top. We uh, already take the hood off the tractor. They have some bolts that run down to the side pin here and hold this side on it. That's pretty tricky on these. The muffler has one bolt that goes through it there that pushes on the muffler and holds it on tight. I had that off. Here we get the other side. Right here. And then we got the bolts out of the front of the hood. Guy just took the oil bath air cleaner off. And you can just take the hood right off the front and get this out to our next step. Dan and Herb have got the radiator loose. There's two studs that come up in from the bottom of the radiator, they're three quarters, and they're going to take this radiator off. They got to get the radiator hoses loose, and the shroud and the radiator will come right off the front. And while they were doing that, I took four bolts out of the back of the air cleaner here, and we're going to take that off. It just makes it a little easier access to the back of the motor. We're ready to take the manifold off. Dan's uh, worked on taking the studs loose and the nuts off them. Uh, make sure you spray some penetrating oil on them. Try to get those loose without breaking them. Also, he disconnected the linkages from the choke at all. When you take this off, it's a good time to inspect it to get an idea of what you might need as far as the gaskets. And also, if the manifolds burn out on the back side, you want to keep an eye on that and see what you need to do. Uh, Guy worked on getting the generator loose here, and he's took the regulator off with it and just disconnected the wires from the regulator and unbolted that and just took it right out. So we've got that part cleared off, and now we'll work on the other side getting the linkage off and things ready to pull the engine out. Around the other side of the tractor now, I'm going to take the tablet cover off. Got four bolts or four nuts on top to take off. Uh, and while I'm struggling with that, Herb's got a project he's working on. I'm going to pull the distributor out and take off the wires to the coil and also the uh, governor linkage. There's uh, two 916 inch bolts here on the bottom of the distributor. You've got to loosen up a little clips and take those off and the distributor out. And disconnect the wire with the coil on it and uh, plug wires. While they're doing it, I'll see if I can get this water pump off of here. You got a milky oil up here. That's terrible. Your governor linkage has a cotter pin here in the front. You got to take that out. And then on the back side, there's a little uh, nut kind of uh, adjuster for the linkage. Loosen this nut up and then you can Slide your governor linkage right out and take this nut thing out and hold it in a good place. Keep that. We're uh, going to be ready to take this water pump off. There's a third bolt underneath down here that we had to turn out with a wrench all the way. It's uh, too close to get a socket onto it. And uh, we're ready to see if this thing will come off or not. It seems to be stuck to the box pretty good. As you take things apart, make sure you put your bolts in a can or something like that to keep track of them so you don't lose them when you get ready to put it all back together. And uh, keep an idea on what parts you might need and gaskets and 
hoses as you go along too, so you know, you can build a list of things you need as you go and get parts. We've got the tab cover off the top of the engine. Now we got to take the rocker assembly and the push rods and everything out. There's four bolts that hold it down, and they're really long, so you got a lot of threads here to go down. There's also an oil tube here. You need to get this little connection loose here, so you get this oil tube loose. Pull that off. A little shield comes off first. Should be able to lift the rocker straight off. Hopefully your oil won't look as bad as it does in this one. Then after that point, now we're ready to take all the head bolts off. They're all a roll of them here and a roll of them along here. These ones up here you'll have to use a wrench to get these ones off. The socket won't fit in there, and the rest of them we can get off of the socket. We've uh, loosened up all the head bolts. They all got to come out. That one come out. And uh, put this back. This goes on with two uh, knots, and they're uh, captured down under there, so you have to take them off with a wrench. But this little water manifold has to come off before the head will come off. The rest of the bolts out there. Also, on this side, there's an oil tube. You want to make sure you get off, loosen that up. Get that out of the way. And then there's three small, smaller uh, studs or bolts, nuts on this side that you need to take off. So you can get this side out of those. With the two studs that the water manifold was held on with, it's extremely tight. Uh, so we, we drove in some wedges. We drove a screwdriver in here to try loosening it up off the wedges. We have not had good luck getting it off yet. But guys got a bar here. We're going to try to lift it up over the studs. If it weren't for them studs, I you got it. You got it, here. And there's the head. We've been working and getting ready to pull the motor out. And there's two bolts, like this, that go right in the very front. It's the front motor mount right in the center. Dan has those out. Uh, we have two eye bolts to uh, hook the chain to. You may not have eye bolts available. What I've done in the past is use a stud with a bigger chain and put a washer on it and just put the chain through the stud and screw into the block. But you have to have some way of securing a chain to the block. Uh, we have a cherry picker. It's in place and we got tension on the chain. Dan has removed two bolts from the front of the block down behind the, the side rails of the tractor and there's two up to the top that we have loose that have to come out. Did you understand? Yep. And underneath there's a little inspection cover. It has two little bolts and it's really behind the flywheel or to the front of the flywheel and it has to come out in order for the motor to come ahead. This little plate right here. <clears throat> Other than all the unforeseen things that we haven't, haven't checked yet, I think we're ready to pull this motor ahead, Dan. We can. Okay. Probably have to go up a bit. Okay, I just see the move. Let me get my pry bar in here. Pry bar behind here and see if you can slide it ahead. In order to get this motor out, it's apparent that we had to take the steering mechanism out because it interfered right here at the rear of the motor. To do that, down in behind the, the tractor rail, the U-joint sits there. We pulled it back so you can see it. All there is is a bolt that goes through the front of the U-joint with a nut on it. When you get that bolt out, you're able to take a hold of the steering wheel and wiggle it and pull this whole shaft right back out of the way. And as far as we can see, that should be about the only obstruction now to get this motor out of here. Jack it up. Jack it up. It's all free. Take it up and out. That'll go up. Whenever you're clear, you're done for enough. Okay, thank you.
know. Okay, before we can put the engine on the engine stand, we have to take the clutch and the flywheel assembly off the end of the motor. Hurt's going to pull these bolts out and we'll get this clutch cover. clutch in backwards yep. here on this and the inside of this is rubbed against the bolts here so uh, that could have been a problem for a long time with this tractor it might have been driving on the bolts instead of the clutch there's a right and wrong way of putting these clutch plates in this is a good time to really bring it up your uh, your spring side of the clutch needs to go back towards the tractor and the flat side go up against the flywheel so you don't have any obstructions in here. Uh, this is the pilot bearing that the clutch shaft runs into. It feels all good in this tractor, but that's another thing you need to inspect. You got the right socket? Right socket. It's dubbed over. I don't know what's going on here. When you get down to the last one, you want to make sure you hold on to this so it doesn't fall off on your toes. They fit pretty tight, and sometimes there's even dolls in them, but this one comes right off. So there, we're all ready now to install this onto the engine stand, and then we can move on to get the oil pan off and, and getting the piston out of it. Okay, we've got it on the motor stand. We attached it with four bolts to the motor stand here. We're taking the chain loose. Going to be able to roll this cherry picker right out of our way. And probably the next thing we'll do is probably be taking the oil pan off, so we want to turn this motor upside right down. Got to pull that pin. And we're ready to pull this oil pan. We're ready to take the pan off. We have all the bolts around the front off. And there's a gasket on there, so you got to kind of tap it off. The guy in here. Uh, got all the bolts off, we took a screwdriver and wiggled it off, and that way we can get to where we can get to the pistons. You can see this motor is all moving, it's had an antifreeze running into the block. Bottom of this sleeve is broke. Yep. You can, I don't know if you can see that from the camera there or not, but the bottom of that sleeve there's a piece missing right out of it. Uh, we've noticed that somebody's had this motor apart before with the clutch being in backwards and stuff, and we'll try to point out all these pitfalls as we come along. Somebody's put this together and it's all silicone all the way around here, so we know that someone's been here before. We're gonna take the oil pump off now. There's an oil pickup tube here. We wanna take one of the fittings loose on that. You can probably take either one off, but you wanna get it out of your way. And then there's two half inch bolts that hold the oil pump in place. Get those loose and taken out. And then hopefully it'll just pull right out like We've rolled the engine up on an angle here to give you a better view. Normally we do this with the motor setting straight up and down. But what we're going to do is cut the ridge out of this back cylinder. And we're doing it mainly to show you how to do it because this, this motor doesn't have any ridge in the top of your cylinder. But some motors that you tear apart will have a, a ridge and your rings come up against it and you won't be able to get the piston out of the hole unless you cut the ridge. And you use a tool, if you don't have one, a lot of tool shops will rent them. Or this one came from Sears, it's a Craftsman. And it expands here, you put it in the hole. And I've set the piston so it's about the right height. And you shove it down there and this top will expand that tool right out into the bore so that you're centered on the bore. And then your, your cutter turns on this point. Before we do that, there's a, a lock on the cutter right here, a little arrow, showing you which way it goes, and you have to release this so it comes out to the wall. And when it's released, it's free. Turns easy. And uh, you just crank this 
And we're not going to get very much out of this one because there's not much going to bridge. But as you turn this, this little cutter comes up towards the top. Basically, all we're doing on this one is taking the carbon off. That quick. actually crank this cutter up that much on that screw. Before you do the next one you have to run it back down. But that takes the top right out of your cylinder bore so that you can pull your piston out. Okay we've got the motor turned back up so you can see what we're doing. We're going to take the pistons out. Guy's taking the cap off and this one here has a, a locking nut on it. Some of them might have a little lip that you have to take a hammer and a punch and, and pound the, the lock over. This has locking nuts on it. The guy pulled the cap off and the bearing stuck to the crank. And uh, they're usually pretty gooey and this one here is, is more so than normal. What I'm looking for on this bearing is I want to check make sure it's standard 10, 20, 30. And it's stamped right in the bearing here. I don't know if you can see that here. Right in the end cap of the bearing it says 030. So it's 30,000 bearing. So this crank has been turned 30,000. Now I've got my hand on the bottom side to catch this. Okay, hits it out to me. It's just about flush. Okay. He's just pounding out with the end of the rubber hammer so he doesn't do any damage to it. One ring just popped up. Two. Three. And that's how easy it is to take it out. Make sure somebody catches it down there and, and out they come. We've got our pistons out now and we want to get ready to take the uh, crankshaft out. To do that, we've got to take the front pulley off and then we've got to take the timing cover off. Take the front pulley off, there's a bolt in here, it's got a locking nut on it, you got to back that locking nut off and then take this bolt all the way out. This long nose on it has to come out to so allow the pulley to come off and then you got to beat on it a bit, get that off. So once we get it off, now we can work on getting the timing cover off. We're getting ready to take the front timing cover off. Herb and I left the distributor drive in, but we had to take the nut off the back of the stud that runs all the way through. And there's an oil tube that comes up that feeds oil to this governor. So we took the little line off the governor tube there. Herb just took that off. We have all the bolts off. We're going to try to wiggle it off. We'll try to take it straight off. And there's the whole timing cover with the governor intact. We left it right on the cover. Before going any further, I wanted to note and see if there are timing marks on your cam gear and on your crank gear. There were marks here. We highlighted them with a paint pencil and see how they line up. Uh, you don't need to know this information to get it apart, but when you start putting your engine together in order to have it in time, you need to know where your timing marks are. We also noted that when these are lined up, your front throw of the crank is straight up and down so that your first piston would be all the way to the top and there's a hole through the crank that locks the front pulley on and that's also straight up and down so these are just reference marks that you want to know while you're taking the motor apart so you know how to put it back together uh, this motor has shims under the main bearing caps I found that a bit unusual I'm not familiar with that but according to the book they belong there and they're to make a fine adjustment on your main bearing clearance and they're on the late WD and the WD45 has shims under here. We're going to pull this cap off and show you just what they look like. And they're made to fit under here in such a way that they do not cover up 
the main bearing insert. They only go between the block and and the cap so that you don't get it in between the insert. Taking all the main caps off now. Now we got them off, you can reach in here and grab onto it, give it a little wiggle. You can take the crankshaft right out of the tractor. We're going to try to pull a sleeve out here, or actually drive a sleeve out with this. But to start, you need some sort of puller so you can pound on the sleeve and uh, not actually pound on the edge of the sleeve. And what we did is we took and made one out of some well casing and some other pieces we had and uh, put it in a lathe and milled it around so it just fits inside the sleeve and has a ledge around it that will push on the outer edge. Now either you can make something or you can go to a, a parts place and probably a machine shop and rent one, a sleeve puller. Here's the edge that Herb's talking about. We just made a shelf so it grabs the sleeve as he drives it. But get in there and make sure it sets in there and then we're using a good sized block here and hopefully with this pound on this and it'll drive right out. It's moving already. And there we go. O-rings on the sleeves, so they kind of come out kind of hard. Now this tractor has had a broken sleeve. Here's the O-rings that typically leak. And we figured that's what's wrong with this tractor here, is we have leaking sleeves, a very common problem with the Chalmers tractor. There's an O-ring. We're getting ready to install the sleeves in this block. And the thing that I want you to know is the preparation for putting the sleeve in is very important. Uh, I found that a plain old wood chisel works very well for getting into this, this counterboard. And cleaning the counterboard really good so at the top of the sleeve sits down in there. You can't have any dirt in there. The second thing you got to do is the bottom surface down here where the o-rings go. You have to make sure that surface is clean and ready to have these o-rings go in. And what We try to scrape it out and get it as clean as we can, but we use a hone. And when this hone goes in, there's a bit of a lead that these go in, so I try to hold it in the hole to where the, the stones are a bit of an angle like this, so that you can clean the lead for the O-rings to go into. And seeing that this, there's no sleeve in the block, you kind of have to work the hone down through to get it in place. You ready? It's about right. Yeah. The same thing when you go to take it out. You got to work these hones out, the stones on the hone out, get it out through the hole. After you do that, I like to take something and clean this hole. So that this sleeve will be all ready to go in here and it'll be clean. And you won't have any dirt or anything cutting the O-rings as they go in. You can probably put whatever you have on these o-rings but you should prepare them and we like to put some silicone on them it works as a lubricant and a sealer probably can wipe that around yeah. Like that. We've got all the sleeves in and just something we wanted to go back over about this is uh, if by chance the sleeves start uh, go in and then they kind of hang up a little bit and they look like they went in pretty good so far, you can put uh, your puller that you had and just maybe hit them gently to drive them in the rest of the way. So 
But just always be careful as they're going in to be conscious of you don't want to pinch that O-ring. So if it looks like it's going in fairly smooth and maybe just needs a little extra help towards the end, you can use your puller or and something across there and nice firm taps on there and seat them in all the way. Just make sure they're seated real well. So that's what you want to do to make sure they're all in good. And as we show you here, we got them all in. What we're going to do now is we're going to hone the cylinders too now. Um, we're going to do this at this point because we don't have the crank in. We don't have to worry about hitting the crank with the hone as we're doing it. And so we're going to hone them now. Um, if you're not haven't took the crank out, you want to make sure as you do hone, you don't have the journals away from the hone at the bottom so you don't uh, hit the stones on that. But we just, we got our hone here and we're going to put it in here, put some lubrication in it. And home with a good up and down pattern so you get a nice cross hat. And if you have a reversible drill, just before you finish it would be good to uh, reverse the motor and go the opposite direction. It will give a, a nice breaking up of the blade. Hold a while, take a rag and wipe it out good and see how it looks, see if you broke the glaze well. And that's all you're looking to do is get the glaze broke and a nice uh, cross hatch pattern in the, the scratching of the cylinder walls. So you go ahead and do that on all four cylinders now and get that done and out of the way and you'll be ready to move on to the next step. We're getting ready to put the crank in and something we want to talk about um, that we haven't talked about before yet is this block, we've power washed this block to get the old oil out and the sludge off of it to clean it up. Um, before you, you know, do this much work on it and you start putting it back together, you want to clean things up good, clean all your parts up that you're going to reuse and clean the block good. Either power wash it, send it away to have it hot tanked or whatever you want to do to get it clean to your standards. But you want to clean it up get that old oil and sludge out of it before you go any farther. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to put the crank in and we've got our bearings in here, we've set them in and you want to make sure these little notches line up with the uh, notches on the block and the bearing caps. On each bearing they have a little notch. You want to make sure that lines up with the notch both on the bearing caps and on the block so you get those in there and, and line those up. Um, just make sure they're set in there and even then on the front one here, this is the thrust bearing, it has sides to it, so that one will go on a little harder, make sure that goes there. The other two bearings are the same. On the back here we have an oil seal. Half of it goes down in here, and the other half goes in the cap. And this is a felt seal with like a, a nylon center thing in it to give it rigidity. This is a little troublesome to put on, and it's felt, and it's dry when you get it, so you want to lube it up with some um, oil or WD-40 or something like that get it worked in there and then what we did to get it really set in there good is we took the cap and we set it over top of the crank where it goes and then we just tapped on this lightly and that set that uh, uh, felt all the way down in there so it sets in there good and then you have to trim the edges off so that it doesn't stick out too far. They always give you a little bit extra so you need to cut the edges off make sure it, you don't cut it too short because that's going to give it the force to keep the oil from leaking out on this rear main seal. So you, and then we set the crank in here temporarily and uh, pounded it down, tapped it down to seat this back seal. So that you want to make sure you get this oil seal in and get it set in there good and trimmed off, which we've done. And now we're going to put the crank in. And before you set the crank in, you want to put some lubrication on your bearings. The guy's going to talk about that. <clears throat> well, we just used regular motor oil, a 30 weight, probably a non detergent, and you can. Have it in a can and just wipe it into your bearings. And put it on the seal also, so that you got a little lubrication on that seal to start out with, so it's not dry. Do the same in the engine block on the bearings. You want to use probably 30 weight oil or something a bit heavy, so it'll lay in there 
and uh, hold the lubrication on the bearing until the oil pump picks up the oil and starts pumping oil through the motor. <clears throat> I'm going to set the crankshaft in, so I'm going to grab onto it and I'm going to put it right in the engine. Remember we had to do the timing mark thing. When we took this motor apart, we had highlighted our marks and this crew was going to be up. Turn the key in a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll roll it around here and show you what we have it lined up. And we highlighted the timing marks with a paint pencil. There's the bottom mark on the can and the mark on the crankshaft. So when they come together, uh, this one had lines. Yours might have dots punched in it. This one had little hash marks. Now that we got that in the right spot, we're going to put the caps on. Guys, move the crank again on top of the crankshaft. The bearing caps our torque at 80 pounds of torque. So we've got our torque crank set at 80 pounds of torque. As soon as we get all the caps on. Want to make sure the down. notch goes to the notch. So if they're both the same side. Also, we're not putting the bushings back under the crank like we showed you when we took it apart. We measured the crankshaft and uh, the, the bushings are there for adjustment. Shim. Shims. Shims are under there. We took them out. We're not going to put them in. When we get this all done, we'll roll it over and show you that it's fine without them. So again, we took all the shims out and we're not putting any of them back in. Okay, we just snug them all up first. You don't go get your 80 pounds of torque until you get them all on. Now this is going to turn a little hard because it's got a felt seal in the rear of the engine that's going to be fairly tight. Okay, I got them all stuck. I'm going to get torque them all You can hear the wrench snap when you hit the 80 pound mark. Now your tractor might have wire on or they might have them tabs that bend over. So this is a late WD-45 tractor and they don't. Once I get them all torqued, I'll go back over them all again. Make sure they got them all at 80 pounds. Make sure the wrench snaps. Just go over them one time. And the guy in here will turn the crankshaft to make sure it's tight. And it's tight. And it's real tight. So, we'll have to redo that. Well, we may have to put some shims in. Yep. Well, I'll take it all back out. <clears throat> Wait a minute, just loosen this one and see if it's a seal. We had a little problem with this crank. It was tight when we put it together and we had to uh, figure what the problem was. And so we uh, loosened up the main bearing caps and rolled it and we tightened down the front main and it was all right. We went on to the second one and tightened that down and it was all right. But when we tightened this rear main, the, the crank would lock right up. And so we took that cap off and inspected it, put it back on, it would still lock up. So we took this cap off and took the main bearing insert out and put it together with no bearing in it. And we still nearly locked this crank right up. So we determined that the seal on the rear main was what was being tight on this crank. So we took that off and uh, really inspected it and where we trimmed the end of the excess material was a little long. We had to trim a little more off than that and we laid it on there again and wrapped this main bearing cap down on the crank without the bearing in it. Then we took it back apart, put the insert in it, torqued it down and this is what we have now. And when, when this crank goes together you shouldn't have any more bind than that on it. And we stopped. We knew we had a problem. And uh, don't don't be wrenching cranks over. If they bind, you're going to have to go back and put shims in, or you're going to have to do one bearing at a time. Find out where your problem is. And uh, we found it was just the rear main seal. And we're ready to proceed with this and go to the next step. We're going to show you how to put rings on the pistons here. 
And uh, you always start with the bottom ring. And the bottom ring here is an oil ring. So this one has four rings total on it. It has three compression rings and an oil ring. So the bottom ring is an oil ring. And this particular oil ring has four parts to it. Um, they have all different types of oil rings. Some of them may only have three parts. Some of them may only come as a one part oil ring. But this one has four parts. It has an expander part here. We'll put that in the bottom here. And then you always want to stagger the gaps on wherever these gaps are. So we kind of make track of the gap for that one was here. Now this scraper type uh, or expander type ring here has different colors at the ends, a blue and orange. And you can easily get these overlapped when you lay it in there. So you always want to make sure that you see the ends right so it doesn't overlap. So we'll put that in here and make sure it's on a different spot and get that in there to where the ends are not overlapped. Okay. Now these are the rails and this particular one uses two rails. One of these rails has got to go all the way to the bottom of it and the other one will go on top of that. And these are about the easiest thing to do is do them by hand and you just start them one end in there on the bottom side of it and they're fairly flexible you don't have to worry about breaking these generally and uh, they're spring steel and you get in there and it will snap in place but just make sure it's on the bottom all the way around because that was the bottom one now we're going to do the top one and again we want to stagger this gap and we don't want to end with that gap so we'll start it over here get it in there and uh what works good a lot of times we're doing this here on these bolts holding it the piston up here but a lot of times the vise put the, the rod in a vise and to hold it steady and then you do it but i have to get in there just make sure it looks okay you can, should be able to turn the the ring around in there so that it spins on that and uh, adjust that okay so we got our oil ring in now the third groove now we're starting our compression rings and the way that these ones here came, these are unique. Herb and I noticed the box has third groove, and then the lid tells you your second groove and your top ring. When we took the rings out, we're looking for them. Usually we're looking for a dot. We're looking for some kind of way of determining which way is the top and which way is the bottom. These ones have the word top stamped right into the top of the ring. So with the word top, we know that's our top ring. I'm using a piston ring expander. They just go right in there and they squeeze it right out. And it, it just squeezes the ring right past the piston. You drop it down to the groove, let off on it, and you're in. And we put the word top to the very top, and that was the third groove. And we're, we'll take our other one. Find the word top. We're looking for the word top. There it is. It's, it's right in the ring. The second and third ring are the same same piston ring and uh, the, the different one here is the very first number one group it's chrome on the edge and uh, it says top on it too there it is now uh, we're going to show you something different on this one um, these ring expanders kind of work the best they keep you from breaking them but um, we've done it too a different way a lot of times you could just Put your thumbs on the ends of the rings and expand them slowly and just lower them over top of the piston and get them in place and let up on them. And if you're careful, you can do that. If you don't have a ring expander, you can use do it that by that method by just grabbing it by your thumbs, giving a little bit of pressure out, and you can even take them off that way if they're good and uh, just expand it out. Don't put too much pressure on it so you break them and just lower them right over the top. And then. Uh, Get them on there, make sure they're in the grooves right, and they spin around okay. And you're all set now to put our ring compressor on there and get them put in, in the cylinder. We're also going to check our grooves here when we put them together that they're staggered. One will be here, and I've turned the other ring here, and the other one's over here. So we've got all of our grooves away from one another. Once we get that done, Herb's got the piston ring expander here all ready to go on. We're going to lube them up really well. We're going to use the same oil that we used on the crankshaft. It's a 30 weight non-detergent motor oil. It's a nice heavy oil so it sticks on the rings and, uh, until the motor gets started and running. And, and it's good to spin the rings around, get some oil in those grooves so that they, uh, 
uh, have some lubrication while you're assembling this engine. Otherwise, um, they can seize up and it won't be good. At this time, too, we're going to put some oil down in the cylinder so that it's lubricated so that it's not running down in a dry cylinder wall and uh, could cause it to bind up and wear excessively when you first start it up. Because um, it might take you a while, you might get into some other problems along the way, so you want to have this lubricated so it doesn't set there dry while you're uh, finished putting it all together. We've got the piston ring it's all lubed up, they're tightened down, ready to pop in the hole. But before we do, we got to determine which way we're going to put them in. And on the rod, they have a nut that tightens down on the wrist pin that tightens the rod down. That nut faces, so when it goes in the hole, that nut faces the camshaft, which is along here. Also, the numbers on the rod and on the cap face the camshaft. So when I put it down the hole, I want to make sure I'm looking at the numbers on the camshaft side. Also, uh, before we put it in, we want to put the upper rod bearing in the, in the rod. And again, these rod bearings, they have a, a tab on them. You want to line that tab up with the notch that's in the rod and make sure that's in there and uh, that the rod is clean. And then you want to lube up, again, we're using this 30 weight non-detergent oil, lube up that bearing so that it's not uh, dry when you put it in there. So you want to lube this bearing up too before we put this down in there. So now we're ready to put this rod back in the engine. Okay, I'm looking at the numbers on the cap. And also, um, when you're doing this, make sure that your crank is the throws all the way back so it's the farthest out of the way. And just uh, lightly tap down on it, holding the ring compressor tight against the top of the engine. And you'll get slide right in there. And now we'll just push it down until it, it butts up against the crank. Turn it around so you can actually see what we're doing on the bottom side of the engine. Now we've got the rod down against the crankshaft and we have to put the cap on it. And again, the tab on the cap on the rod bearing has a tab just like the other one. And so you're going to put tab to tab when you put them together. You look up there and you'll see the tab and you want to tab to tab. Also, it should be number to number. So there's two things to look at to make sure you're putting the caps on the right way because they can get put on backwards. Um, these bolts happen to come out really easy on the rod, so we took the bolts out before we put the rod in, and now we're just putting them back in. They have uh, flat spots so they line up. We make sure we lube up that bearing cap again before we put that on. So again, we want to make sure this is lubed up well while it's assembling so that way it isn't put together dry. Gives you less chance of things binding up. It started. According to the book, and Herb and I, we're using the implement and tractor manual along with us. When we work on engines, we always have a manual with us. And they recommend that the caps be torqued. These are self-locking nuts. And they recommend that they be torqued at 40 pounds of torque. If it has cotter keys, they're recommending 70. This one has self-locking nuts. So we're going to use a torque wrench, and we're going to set the wrench at 40 pounds of torque. Okay, we're setting the torque on the cap. This particular one, a WD-45, has self-locking nuts. And in the manual that Herb and I are using, said the torque at 40 pounds of torque. So you can hear the wrench snapping. We set them at 40 pounds. Now, it says in the book that the later, the early model ones with the cotter keys are 70 pounds of torque and then put the cotter key in. So if your tractor has a cotter key, read the manual and set them at the right torque according to the manual. And again, as you put this back together, as you put each piston in and you get them torqued down, you want to turn it over. Make sure that that bearing didn't seize up. And this, again, turns over, has about the same amount of res uh, resistance as it did before. And that's what you want to make sure that you're not uh, increasing the resistance as you're putting this together. Make sure the thing still goes together right as you go so you don't have a problem when you get done. We're going to put the oil pump in the bottom of the engine. We have all the pistons in, and again, like Herb and I said, we rolled it over, made sure that it wasn't tight. We have our bolts torqued. We made sure that the numbers 
on the cabs are all facing the cam side of the engine and we have the torch set according to the book. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the oil pump in while we have the motor turned upside down. The oil pump in a WD is quite heavy. We didn't take this one apart to track it had great oil pressure prior to taking it apart. If you have to take it apart, it's got a screw face on here and there's a gear in there. Now, you can't buy a kit. I checked when I was at the dealer. You have to buy each part separately. So it's not a real common thing to rebuild these pumps. Not like a Ford tractor where every time you rebuild the motor, you have to uh, rebuild the pump. Curves just slide it in and it goes into the camshaft. So you got to make sure you get the gear lined up there. We actually might have to roll the engine just a little bit to get it to drop in. There it goes here. There. We rolled the motor just a bit and it dropped in place. You got to make sure you get it in there. You don't take a hammer and drive it in. Yeah, I want to make sure this uh, oil pickup tube or discharge tube from it lines up and gets that on. And then you got the two bolts that hold it down. And just Herb's got his started, and then I can go ahead and tighten mine down. It drops in, the gear on the end of the drive runs off the camshaft, so you have to get it lined up with the camshaft. That's why we turned it. You want to make sure that you don't force it in and then get them snugged up. Herb's got his line snug. We're going to put the front timing cover on the front of the end. We put a new gasket on here and we stuck it to the crankcase of the tractor and in the front of the timing cover is your front seal for the crankshaft. We got a new one and I got it started. I get a socket that's about the same size as the seal, set it on there. And it works better to lay it down on a flat surface but for the cam purposes here, we're going to do it up in the air. You just want to drive it in flush. And I think we're just about right there. Now we'll turn it around and look on the inside. And make sure that we're all the way in. And we are. You can feel it in there. Uh, I think it needs to go just a little more here in the front cover. Or right there on that side right there. There, now it's all the way down. Now we got that, we uh, got our gas down, so we're ready to put it on. You have to put this on before you put the oil pan on because part of the oil pan sits on this. Um, gotta go. uh, I need to let you go on first. Yeah. You need to work this uh, O ring, get it start, or the seal, get that started on the crankshaft, kind of first, and then line up your bolts. Stud that we're stuck in out that makes it a little different. Uh, bit of a challenge to get in place. And then uh, see all your bolts put in. Remember there's a long bolt that went all the way through besides that stud. You have to get that in there and tighten it up. We're getting ready to put the oil pan on and uh, we've cleaned the oil pan all up and of course you're doing all this work on the engine you want to make sure you clean your parts. Um, we've cleaned the oil pan up, cleaned off the old gasket surface area, and got this ready to go. Um, there is a big uh, nodule in the back to kind of show you this is, goes to the back of the engine, and this part goes to the front. And then, same way on the block, we made sure the surface was cleaned off to put the gasket on. We put some kind of like contact type cement stuff on here to hold the gasket in place. And this has four pieces to the gasket, as a top and a bottom here on the sides. And then it has these, uh, this cork uh, strip that goes over the bearing cap uh, ends on the rear, front and rear of that. And we found that they were a little bit long, and so we trimmed them down to the right size so they fit around there real good. And then we put a little bit of silicone at the corners, just at the ends of that, just to make sure that those corners, the ends of those strips, seal up. And uh, we got those in position, and we're going to just set the oil pan down in here. And uh, that piece right there, that's our big concern to make sure that fits in there and seats down. And... How's it look back there? Fine. Fine. Okay. And then uh, just get your bolts and get them started in there. Get the pan lined up with the holes. And...
Get a few tight down, hold it in place, and then you can just work around and get them all tightened up. Um, you want to be careful, these aren't real big bolts. You don't want to put a lot of torque on them. You just want to bring them up snug and tighten them down a little bit. You don't want to have any of these break off. And uh, take your time, put them all in there, and it'll seal up good for you. We're going to put the pulley on here in front. We feel it's a good time to put this back on. On the crank here, there's the hole goes all the way through, but one side has got a chamfer in it, so it's this uh, bolt will fit right in there good. So we want to make sure that's the side we're lining up the hole on. You line the hole up there and tap it on in place. And uh, it goes on pretty snug. So. tighten it down and then make sure you tighten that locking bolt up. Before you flip the motor over it's easier now to go ahead and tighten your green plug in your pan. Make sure that that's tight. It's easier to do everything here on the bottom when the motor is upside down before we flip it over. Then we'll get that bolt tight and then we'll be ready to flip it up. It has four bolt holes and there's four in the crank and they're unequally spaced. You can only put it on one way. And uh, the best way is just trial and error, get them lined up right. And what I usually do is use a, a large Phillips screwdriver to hold this and put it in one of the holes and you can just kind of slide the flywheel right down the shaft of the screwdriver, get it started on the flange of the crank, line up a bolt, does it start? Yep, yep, I started. Okay. Just go ahead and zap them in the air wrench. Okay, we're ready for the the clutch plate. And you want to remember when we tore this tractor apart, they had it in the wrong way. They had the spring section against the, the flywheel and it had rubbed on these bolts. You want to make sure you put the flat side of the clutch towards the flywheel. We got a little clutch alignment tool there that'll go right into the pilot bearing. Line this up and we're ready for the cover. I'll hold this up and get the cover in the, in the pilot. Yes, in the The flywheel and the clutch and the pressure plate are all on the motor ready to go. Before we put it in the tractor, we want to check the throwout bearing. And the throwout bearing is right back here and actually grab right onto it and wiggle it. Make sure there's no slop in it at all and it's not war bad. This one's in real nice shape, so we're not going to change it. If yours is worn and sloppy, put a new one in. You'll be glad you did it at this point, rather than waiting down the road here and then decide you have to have a new throwout bearing after you put the motor in. So we decided this one's okay. We're going to go ahead and put the motor in now. All right. When we bring the motor in, we're using a cherry picker. Put it in the tractor. Give your side number. All right, that's pretty good. All right. It's great to have this many hands to do it with. Uh, Got to go down now. When you're lowering this down, you always want to be careful to have your hands away from any pinch points. So there's a lot of them here when you're lowering this motor in. Oh, what Herb and I are going to try to do is get the input shaft started. Then go down this a little more on three here. We're going to try to get the input shaft into the center of the engine. It's kind of tricky because there's a cross member here on the back of the oil pan that we're working around. And we're trying to get a close guy, right there. Okay. 
We're going to put the rocker arm assembly on, but first I'm going to show you, we've just dropped all the push rods in, and you kind of have to uh, feel and get them to drop right in the right place, and then you can drop the rocker arms on. The, uh, it takes four fine threaded nuts to hold these down. You need some way to get some Okay, you got to put that in. Little cover splash coming here. This one here, I think, is made a little different. Right on the end. Okay. We're putting that on backwards, too. Yep, yep. I look better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good couple for you. Better get a wrench to run them down. Yeah, yeah. We're going to set the valves at 14 thousandths on the intake and the exhaust. It says 12 hot, so we're going to give ourselves a little room because they're cold. The book doesn't give you a cold setting, but uh, we're going to go ahead and make them all 12. That's what we're going to set them at. We also had to hook this little oil line that feeds the rock arms up when we put the head on. We've had that, and then there's a little line that runs into the rock arm shaft. You might have to roll it. No, it's there. Got to just find a hole. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put this one in. I have a little sequence as to how I set these valves. Uh, if you think about this engine, number one piston and number four piston came up and down together. And so, if you uh, jog the motor over, so if these two valves right here, we're going to do this on the starter, this uh, would be the exhaust and this would be the intake. That intake just closed. The exhaust is opening, so your piston is coming up when your exhaust valve is open. When it gets to the top, your intake will start to open, right there. When you're in that position, you know number one is on the firing position, so you're in the right position to set these valves at number one soon. I'll go back to gauge. Oh, too tight. Loosen it up. Right there. Just so all right? Yep. All right? Yep. Good. That was just perfect. That one's a little tight. Yep. Look, tighten it up, tighten it up. Right there. Lock it down. How is that? Perfect. Okay? Yep. All right. Now we do the same thing for number four. We got a little That's your exhaust. Your intake's going to just start to open right there, so you know this one's in firing position. And you can set those. It's got to be tightened down. Right there. Okay. A little tight. Okay. Perfect. This one's tight. Too tight. Okay. Tighten it down just a little bit. Right there. Lock it down. Okay. Now your center two cylinders go up and down together. <clears throat> this here would be your exhaust valve on number two, and I can see it's already open, so we're going to wire it. Now this one's going to start to open. Now you're ready to do number three. That one's tight. It's tight on the valve also. Right there. A little bit loose, just a little, a little looser. Right here. Okay. All right. Yep. It says right on the money. Okay. That one just needs to be just a tad bit snugger, just a little bit. And we'll be there. Right there. Okay. We can live with that. All right. Yep. Tighten her down. Right. Our last one right here. 
So we got to wrap that up. Right there. We're ready to do this one. It's real tight. A little more. Right. Tighten it up right there. We can leave it there. Right in the mic. This one's real tight again, also. A little less. Right there. Okay, tighten it up. Right there. Okay. Yep, no, that's fine right there. How's that? Perfect. We want to run around to the other side and show you exactly what I was doing on this side while a guy was adjusting them down. We're going to go ahead and roll the motor over. You can see the exhaust valve, there goes the intakes. Now we're ready to set the back one. What I was doing is I have a 14 thousandths feeler gauge here and guy was adjusting them. I'll back it off so we can All right. it. It's real loose right now and guy turns the screwdriver. There, it's too tight. Right there, it's just right. So guy tightens them down and then I make sure that that just fits in there to where it just touches and it's right. All right, this one's too loose. Oh, too tight, back up, right there. And then guy locks them down while I hold it in place. And then I check it again before he's done and it's just touching, just touching. And that's what I was doing on this side. We're gonna put this water pump on the front of the tractor now and we put a gasket cement on here and on the water pump. And we have to enter this uh, little hose connection up here and just start some bolts in. Is it up by me? I think this one started. Get it started. Tips your waist. There, this one's going. Back. And just tighten her up and make sure you get your hose hose clamp tight. Also remember to think about if you needed to replace this hose, now's the time to do it. And just tighten her down. The bottom, the bottom bolt down here we've left the last. You can't get a socket on it, and you have to take that one in with a wrench. I'm gonna set this distributor in and put it in time and show you how to time it. But I wanted to show you first that when it's set in, number one wants to be pointed right straight towards the front of the tractor. This is number one wire going over here. So to time number one, Again, I go back to the valves, and I jog this around, this, uh, the exhaust is just closing, intakes just starting to open, so I know number one is right up in firing position. So I have to look and see where the rotor is pointing. I don't know how we drop that in, but it's just about right. Right there. You can uh, take this out, jog this any place. But when it goes down in, you want this rotor to be pointing as near as you can get it. Right straight ahead. Just like that. And then, all you have to do is put your clamp bolts in here, clamp it down, and at the same time. We're gonna put the valve cover on, and uh, we've got a new gasket here that we've got we put on, we put some uh, contact type uh, cement for gaskets here on this to keep it in place. Sometimes these are bowed and they don't hold together well. So uh, then we'll get the valve cover. We've cleaned it up, cleaned all the oil off of it and uh, put that on there. And uh, then there's uh, little O-rings and nuts that go on here. We'll have to get those O-rings. I don't have those right now, but put those on. And then. Uh, we also hooked up the wires to the distributor and the coil, we did that. And we also hooked up the governor linkage, throttle linkage here, and put that in and tighten down the nut, and put the uh, cotter pin in it. Now that we've got the distributor in place too, and the timing all done, we can go ahead and put our plugs in. So we're gonna do that, put the plugs in. And also, we've already added oil in this. Uh, before we started doing the timing, we went ahead and put uh, five quarts of new oil in it and a new filter on it. So that way as we cranked it over for that, it would work on getting uh, pulled up into the pump and back up into the engine. So we did that too. So right now we're going to just go ahead and put these plugs in and we'll get the washers for this and tighten that down and, and start the 
cover this up. We're going to put the manifold on now, and uh, it's got these little round gaskets that go on each one of the intakes and exhaust ports. So we want to make sure those are on there. Maybe put a little stick them on there. They uh, seem to want to fall off easy enough, so getting these lined up on the studs and keeping them from falling off could be a challenge. So you get up there. Okay. Okay. Get it up there, and then you can start some bolts and hold it right in place. I'll have a tractor manifolds like that, then little rings on like that. So then I'm going to tighten this down, get all these bolts in here, and then uh, Dan's going to work on putting the carburetor on as soon as we get this snugged up a little bit here. I have the carburetor ready to go. As soon as we can get our hands free, the gaskets up under here, and just two bolts hold the carburetor on. I'll just put one on it for now. And once we get the carburetor on, then we're ready to hook up the gas line and all the linkages that go through the carburetor. There's a choke cable in the back and the throttle linkage that has to be hooked up. Um, the cotter keys had a piece of wire in them that held them on. We're going to go ahead and put new cotter keys in. Make sure the linkages when you put them on are free from being binding or something. When you pull the choke it should pull easily and uh, same with the throttle linkage. It should work freely. There shouldn't be any bind on them. Herb and I are going to continue on tightening these down. We're going to tighten them down slowly so that we don't pull it crooked onto the head. We're going to tighten this one a little bit and get them all snugged down all in sequence. We'll do that right now. And also while we're over here, um, this is where you drain the block of water. You might have drained your block of water. You're going to be getting the radiator on pretty soon, like you put the water pump on. You want to make sure this petcock's closed. When you forget about it, you end up having water pouring out when you start filling the radiator later. So while you're over here, sometime during there, remember to close this petcock so you don't drain the water out on the floor as you start filling it back up. Okay, we're getting closer now. We've put the oil bath air cleaner back on this side. There's four bolts around back that hold that on. we put the gas line back on. we put the generator on. The fan belt's on the generator. The voids regulator's back on. So this side is all caught up. Now, we need to put the radiator on. And the radiator just has two bolts, one in this hole, one over here. The big trick is to get the lower and upper radiator hose on. The lower radiator hose is in a real tough to get to place. Mm -hmm. It's on? Yep. I gotta back up a little bit on the top here. And the top's on. Okay. Yeah, it is. Get the bolt lined up now. Now we gotta just line the bolts up in the bottom. We're using a long extension with a swivel socket on the end to reach all the way up there to get to it. Tighten them down and tighten up the clamps and put your antifreeze back in. We got the hood on and so we've kind of finished everything up. We put the hood on, got the muffler on, put all the breather cover on, got everything kind of finished up, bolted down, tightened down. And uh, we've started it and did some preliminary adjustments on it. And just something to talk to you about right now is that when you get it started up, you want to adjust your distributor. We course set the distributor when we put it in to make sure that it was lined up to a number one cylinder. But what you do is once it's running, you uh, loosen up the bolts holding down the distributor and turn it until it just labors and then back it off until it just sounds good and uh, it should be set about right there. And that's what we've done and now it should start up and we're going to show you that it starts up now. Uh, it starts up good and it runs good, sounds good, the tablets are quiet and uh, 
All of it sounds pretty good right now. Um, if you have problems and it doesn't start good, you need to uh, look into various things about the carburation and uh, the uh, points and different things like that to make sure everything's okay. I hope this video on the engine rebuild was helpful to you on your Ellis Chalmers tractor. We also have a uh, video on the tune-up of this tractor. We go through step-by-step -step on the carburetor, the distributor, the points, how to get it to start and start properly. We'll also change the oil and filter, adjust the brakes, all that kind of stuff is covered on the tune-up video. So if you'd like a copy of that, write to us at the address on the video or at the end of this tape. A great big thanks to my father-in-law Guy and my favorite brother-in-law Herb for helping with this video. Thank you.